this is early at Hi Fi Town. Uh, today, um, I had a request from a customer uh, for a pair of Altec 808-A drivers. Uh, these are a really interesting bit of uh, history uh, in Altec Lansing uh, in their later days. And I just wanted to share a few details and frequently asked questions I get about drivers like this um, and uh, some other general things about Altec very quickly. Um, Anyhow, this is, uh, as you can see, you, uh, you guys may have seen in your years this badge on the back of the Altec driver. And um, anyhow, at this point in Altec's life, they had um, reached a stage where they needed to increase power handling in some of their drivers. And what's very, very interesting about uh, this development was that uh, it didn't the outcome wasn't quite what uh, the engineers probably intended So uh, what is the Altec symbiotic driver? Well, um, somewhere along in in the very late 1960s, I would say um, Altec uh, devised a, a, um, a type of diaphragm that was basically the same as their 802 series um, and 806 series diaphragms uh, with but a hybrid. It's part phenolic. I refer to it as phenolic. It possibly may be a polyamide type of plastic. At any rate, as far as I know, this was the first hybrid uh, aluminum plastic diaphragm ever um, constructed. Uh, except for, you know, it, around World War II there were some phenolic diaphragms and things like that, but as far as like a hybrid, a combination, Anyhow, um, Altec advertised it. They, the uh, marketers named it uh, the Symbiotic Driver. And it carried with it, uh, they got some interesting results with this. They, um, uh, they were able to increase power handling but keep the efficiency the same. Now, what audiophiles later realized, and musicians at the time, because these were used in studio monitors, is that not only were they able to handle more power, but also they were they sounded smoother especially at the upper ranges uh, where aluminum kind of gets raspy and nasty sounding yes and uh, for my customer here i also wanted to show um this one here has a little tiny ding which again does not affect the performance of the diaphragm probably this happened when it was um serviced uh, many years ago anyhow these units were playing nicely and they're fairly well matched so this is why so many Altec drivers of this era don't have, they're either not working or they don't have original diaphragms. And as I said, it's a shame they don't make the symbiotic diaphragm anymore. And uh, they, they don't, uh, so these are typically replaced with all aluminum diaphragms, which drastically changes the sound. So um, let me show you what, what Altec did wrong here when they constructed these. Um, this side you can kind of see... Um, let me see here. This side you can kind of you can kind of see what happened here. Um, Altec installed these with a 90 degree bend on the lead wire right here. And what tended to happen was here's a diagram I drew that's a little easier to see. What happened was as these were playing, especially at loud volume levels, um, there was a fatigue that developed. Uh, if we have a nice curve like this, there's a little bit of a spring action here, and uh, fatigue is kind of spread across the, the arch. But what happened was when whoever whoever's idea it was to install to to bend the wire sharply created a little bit of metal fatigue right here. And uh, what happened was ultrasonic vibrations, which come from all drivers, cause a lot of problems actually, possibly some heat, but also, just, just the vibrations gradually caused a break right here in that 90 degree bend, making the mid-1960s to 1970s original diaphragms prone to failure. They didn't sound bad. When they work, they work great. Um, this, this is just a reliability issue. It's not a sound quality issue, and um, on any given Sunday, I would much prefer to have the original diaphragm with the 90 degree bend. Later on in the 1970s and 80s, Altec figured this out and went back to this system right here. Lansing, James B. Lansing, originally had a much more, you know, much more elegant uh, curly cue like this he, he did, which is a beautiful mechanical design, but I'll get into that later. So that was the problem. Now, so what, um, what, what happened with these drivers? Well, these are original diaphragms. They look great, as you can see. Um, compare 
to the factory uh, picture of a symbiotic diaphragm. This was, you know, the release of it. These look very similar. They look fine. A technician, a very, a fairly skilled technician, reattached these wi lead wires in a very reliable sort of way. Um, yeah, there we go. Um, and they're in good condition again. So they, he reattached them with solder, and they're uh, very reliable at this point. Sometimes there's a strain relief put in. But uh, this is a field serviceable repair that can be done. It's just that people don't do it. Um, again, this happens to 288s, um, 802s, 806s, all sorts of stuff. Anything from this era where they put that 90 degree bend in the lead wire. So um, with that said, these were rated, these drivers were originally rated at, uh, I don't know what the asterisk means, but 50 watts. Well, I wouldn't push them that hard. Nobody should really. Realistically, these are just as efficient as an 802D and they should be treated as such. An 802D was rated at around 30 watts. Um, and uh, they were also rated in a similar uh, uh, frequency response, 500 cycles all the way up to 20,000. So these are nice hi-fi drivers, are highly recommended. You just have to watch out for this. These look like they're going to be solid and reliable for my customer, so I'm happy to offer them to him. And uh, they're just very beautiful uh, diaphragms. It's a shame they don't make these anymore. You can get into the history of this kind of design, but sometime after these, um, or maybe contemporaneous with these, uh, uh, Rankus Hines, or uh, Mr. Rankus of Rankus Hines fame, it was MLR before that, uh, came up with a hybrid type diaphragm like this as well, and uh, that was their claim to fame, and uh, their diaphragms were very nice, and I believe they still make them the same way. So nowadays this is an unheard of technology, but this was a first in um, a first for Altec and a first in the field of cinema uh, commercial sound uh, in the 1960s. So uh, that's the Altec Symbiotic. So um, I'm going to do a quick demonstration now for my customer, and uh, you guys enjoy. And one of the best thing about these um, these accessories, the uh, these vintage compression caps, these um, uh, the, uh, in my opinion, the best thing uh, amongst the other good things they can do, what I really like is they protect the diaphragm when you're taking the cap off. And most importantly, by the uh, 1960s and 70s, they started to use a crimp terminal system to attach the uh, to the to the phenolic ring mounting ring. And those wires can, in some cases, damage the diaphragm when they press down when you assemble the cover. So these compression caps are really nice to have. Um, they're very high quality. They were made by Altec. And oftentimes, they were never installed on drivers from the factory. So again, they are an optional accessory that's nice to have. So that was just a brief demonstration of these um, uh, vintage early 1970s Altec 808-8A uh, drivers. They're really very nice sounding. Uh, they're good quality. It was a very interesting, historically interesting um, time period for Altec as they transitioned from uh, high-powered tube amplifiers to to early solid state and um, and these were sort of like a um, evolutionary thing that Altec did uh, that really did smooth out the high end 
Still, those die-hard audiophiles that want uh, that raspy detail of uh, all aluminum diaphragm are going to want to go for an earlier 802 or something like that. But um, for if you can afford to have multiple types of Altec drivers, I always recommend these. They're really nice. They work with the whole Altec lineup of componentry of that era. And they really are a good pedigree. So um, go out and look for some and watch out for, uh, make sure the diaphragms are in good condition. And above all else, make sure that they are the original symbiotic, which is uh, the, the very point as to why you would want to purchase those drivers or these types of drivers and you can always look for the badge um, on the back but the only telling the only way you can be sure is to actually open up and inspect the diaphragms as I did so again that's, uh, this is early at Hi-Fi Town and I hope you enjoyed this uh, uh, demonstration and a uh, little bit of a history